conference for the 2024 Monaco e Pre. Joining us on stage are our team representatives Cyril Blaze from Maserati MSG Racing, Ian James from Leon McLaren, and Russell O'Hagan from the ERT Formula E team. Welcome, gents. I was, as I was about saying, excellent to be back here on the Monte Carlo Street Circuit racing in Monaco. Last night was the, uh, the grand reveal of the all new Gen 3 Evo. So before we get stuck in talking about uh, the upcoming race, a quick word from each of you on, on your thoughts on, on next season's package. Ian, yeah, start with you. You know, firstly, good afternoon all. Um, a real pleasure to be back here in Monaco to race on the streets of Monte Carlo. Uh, as always, a great event, I'm sure we'll come on to that in a second. Um, but a great opportunity to launch Gen 3 Evo uh, last night. One of the things that I always say is that the this championship works so well with the fact that we collaborate between the FIA, FEO, the manufacturers, the teams, the drivers, of course. But I think what we saw last night was really a culmination of that collaboration over the past couple of years. Gen 3 in itself was such a significant step forward um, compared with Gen 2, but we always felt that there was more potential in the package that could be unlocked. And what we've seen with some of the innovations that are coming through on the Gen 3 Evo is exactly that. I think we're taking the package to reach its maximum potential, and that's been as a result of the feedback that's been received, that, that has been listened to, and put in there. So I think it's a job well done by the whole team that's behind it. Russell, what's your thoughts on the new package? Uh, very similar, really. I, th I think having been a big part of that process as, as team of manufacturers, seeing how the cards come together, uh, it has a lot of the things that we wanted to, to make better, I think, as an ecosystem. Uh, from, a, from a personal perspective, also for us, uh, we're hoping to make some big performance rides. We've got some big upgrades coming from the, the, the power train, so we're equally as excited about that from a, a team perspective. Just ready to get on the track and stop, stop seeing what it's like. Yeah. Good challenge ahead. Zero? Uh, no, it was very good. Uh, I think, uh, like my colleagues say, uh, the racing is great, and I feel that uh, it can be improved. And uh, it's great that uh, the FIA, everybody's uh, listening to the feedback from, uh, from the team, because it can be uh, a great improvement. And I think, uh, first, aesthetically, you know, the car looks even better, uh, I feel. Uh, there will be a bit less uh, drive sensitivity, which will make the, the racing even better. So I think, all in all, it was a great step forward, uh, looking forward to the next generation of how on earth, none of you mentioned the 0 to 60 in 1.8 seconds, I don't know. <laughs> Come on, guys, you know, you're used to that. Of course, yeah, the four-wheel drive and the, the 0 to 60, yeah, it's going to be great. Uh, the back mode in four-wheel drive, the start. Uh, it's great to showcase as well the performance of the car, what the electric car can do. Uh, they are very fast, uh, very fast car. Uh, even though we, we save energy and sometimes we don't realize you know, how fast this car can be and the, the real uh, potential of performance, uh, I think that you're absolutely right, you missed it. Uh, but uh, yeah, it's absolutely a uh, brilliant showcase of the technology and what the Formula E can do. And uh, yeah, that's going to be great. Really well, brief, well enough. That's, <laughs> the, that's the issue. Just, just, just a very quick comment on that, because I think it's a really important point. Some of the headline figures which have been out there are, are seriously impressive. Um, and I think it's great to, to put a highlight on that. But ultimately, I think what is the most important thing is it's going to make the racing even better. And we've seen some world-class racing throughout Gen 3 already. Um, I think some of the races we've had have been the best that we've ever seen in, in Formula E, um, but really sets it sort of towards the pinnacle of most sport as well. The Gen 3 Evo, for all of those headline figures, it just goes to make that racing even better and even closer. So I think that's a, that's a huge, huge opportunity there. Great to hear. Um, Cyril, let's start with you talking about this upcoming race. And then another home race. Oh, yeah, yeah, the home race for the Maserati brand in Mazzano, and then you've got the home race for the MSG team, followed by a home race for Maximilian in Berlin. I can imagine you're very keen to make a good stop on the Monaco this season. Yeah, we're going from the archery, so uh, I'm not for sure. It's, it's great for us for a home race for the team. Uh, it's very important we will all partners, you know, and uh, we want to do well. Uh, Mizano was very important for, for Maserati as well. Uh, we managed to do a podium, the first point from, from Gian. So it's great, but uh, we really go to, to make a, a good result, which I think we can, because in the last few years we had the pace, yeah, we were really strong in qualifying uh, last year. The race didn't go well exactly as planned, but uh, if the weather all off, we plan to rectify that, and uh, I think we're on a very good trajectory with the team. I think the performance is there. Uh, we're not there yet to be at the top, there's still uh, some deficit that we need to work on, the team is working hard on it, but uh, we're on a positive trajectory, and I think the momentum is with us, so for sure we are. Uh, we are all keen and eager to deliver a strong result for the, for the team this week. 
You mentioned there about the trajectory with you know, Max has got a lot of success, another podium in round six, John getting his first point, like I said. Are you happy with where you are? Do you think there has been an, an element of some left still on the table? You can never be satisfied on the way you go back on it, especially in FE. So, uh, no, for sure we go for more, but uh, that's what the, the boys and girls at the Maserati MSG as well. Uh, don't forget to take a step back and realize what to achieve. Uh, we don't have a point yet, and uh, we score a win. Podium last time in Isano, uh, James was points, uh, Max was scoring in uh, every race so far this year. Consistency is key in this championship. I see in Misano uh, race two, we left frustrated because we had the potential again to be in top five. Uh, we went for an aggressive strategy, which was not uh, optimum, but uh, yeah, we should have been in top five again, so the potential is there. So yeah, it was a weekend of two half. We see a podium, uh, as a ratio race, and the first one was great, but uh, we also look at what we should have done better, and we do better, because there was another top five on the table uh, in Mizano race two. Charles directs by that uh, this weekend. So Maserati MSG sitting just 10 points behind Diaz Penske in the standings, the other Stellantis power car. Jeff in the DS, 10 points behind Max in the, in the driver standings. Is there any additional rivalry or competition there between the two teams? Is there kind of the hardware bragging rights at stake? No, not really, because uh, we have to be honest, you know, uh, Jeff was, for example, for instance, you know, flying all weekend in Mizano, and he was dragging the other three cars along with him. So uh, our success is their success and vice versa. So we were looking at uh, two different entities, but you know, the same, under the same group and having the same power track. And I think we're all pushing to make the package, you know, better and be fighting for championship and wins. And after that, uh, the internal uh, war, let's say, or whatever you want to call it, it's <laughs> okay, it's good. Uh, it's a good challenge, you know, as long as it's healthy competition, always, uh, you always want to do best. But I think that uh, we have to be grateful and, uh, and also acknowledge, you know, that uh, when we are quick and when we are successful, there are a part uh, to it, and I think vice versa. So I think uh, we need to not forget the, the bigger picture. Okay. Ian, moving on to yourself. Um, the word at the paddock kind of this weekend is that the Nissan powertrain, obviously one that you race as well, is going to be the one to beat here, because you have a proven one that pace, uh, last season with the front row lockout, I think it might be one, two, three. Um, and now with five Nissan powered podiums, including two of the wins, one being Sam, of course. Looking just back to Mazzano, Jake especially looked like he was on rails when it came to quality. So it's easy to see why people are making this assumption now going into Monaco. Yeah, I think it's a very dangerous assumption to make um, from my perspective that you know, throughout, we know the second season of Gen 3, that we've seen this convergence of performance across all the teams and the various manufacturing powertrains as well. So it's so tight um, that it would be naive to think that it's going to be a walking part for anybody. Um, having said that, Jake was on fire in, in Misano. Um, I think they were potentially even two pole positions in the bag. By his own admission, he made a mistake in the duels on that first day. Um, great that he could get that pole on the second day. That's a really rare thing to see across, especially a double header, that kind of consistency going, going through there. So that, that gives us confidence going into this weekend. We were very um, performant here last year as well, which was great getting that, uh, getting that pole position for him then. Um, we need to continue to improve um, on our, 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 the way that we execute our racing, uh, there's no doubt about it. So single lap, very strong races, we haven't had the results that we think we're, we're capable of. Um, so the focus is just on making sure that for tomorrow, we execute every session as cleanly as possible and start building up towards the, uh, the qualifying and then of course the, the race. But I think whoever qualifies well here will put themselves in a very strong position for this going to be an epic fight. Those, those races are moments that you mentioned there where they're potentially going to be missed opportunities. What do you, what do you put that down to? I don't think there's any one single factor there. Um, within the team, we have, of course, analysed not only the, 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 the issues themselves, where they've come up, but the reasons behind those issues. And it goes, you know, we often talk about this no blame culture that we have that's so crucially important to be able to speak openly about it. Um, but there's no one single point of failure and what we, what we just need to do is make sure that we never let those issues happen again um, and then just tighten up everywhere else to make sure that, as I say, we can execute cleanly. One of the things within Formula E at the moment is that you, if you don't, if you start on the back foot on a particular event in FP1, for example, 
then it's very difficult to recover that through the through the other sessions as well. Not impossible, but but, but difficult. So the aim is really just to make sure that it's it's clean from the outset. As I say, we have that slow build up to uh, to the performance that we can unlock then. <coughs> okay. Thank you, uh, Russell. Moving on to yourself. Great to have you up here after what was a huge weekend for the, for the team of Mazzano. You know, all but three of the total points scored this season came from that double header, including Dan's P4 in uh, round six. Um, is this a case of just taking those opportunities and maximising what you can? Yeah, I, th I think so. For Mizano, to be honest, we went in with very low expectations. I think it's a, a circuit that everyone knew had quite high power trade efficiency sensitivities. So I think we, we all went in there with very modest expectations and then came away um, with, with some pretty impressive results. I think in the end, uh, for correct to the, the team and drivers, two things really. One, one was being super pragmatic with what the car was capable of. Uh, and then sticking to a strategy based around that, and just a real conviction uh, in not in not moving away from that. You know, I, I had my thumb on the bottom of the intercom, like, can we go now, can we go now? But they, they kept waiting and waiting, and yeah, full credit to the team and drivers in just staying super brave, super realistic, and yeah, the, the results were there. So, very proud of the team. So, kind of following off from that, energy efficiency has been a, a bit of a struggle against some of the other teams <laughs> in the Gen 3 era so far. The last season, qualifying was kind of the remedy of that, allowing you to start in good positions. But then this season, that one lap pace not being as prolific. What, what do you think? Where, where does the change come from? Um, yes and no. From, from our own metrics, I would say the one lap pace is still there, potentially even slightly better this year than last year. I think, in a way, that's ended up in results. It's probably, it's probably two things. One, I think Dan's not been as comfortable over one lap as he was last year, and particularly the start of his season last year was. was Pretty outstanding. Uh, obviously, Sergio has had two um, dual performances, two qualifying performances into the, the semi-finals, and I, th I think the bigger thing is just how competitive it is. Now, uh, you sit there at the start of a, a group session with 11 drivers in each group. No idea who's going to be the top four. You maybe get, you maybe guess one of the four, and I think it's it's genuinely a big part of why Formula is so exciting. Though, that even those of us in the nitty gritty each day, like. You, you could be first, you could be seventh, you could be eleven. So yeah, I think it's really just showing how much the grid is compacted this year. You've got, you've got to get everything right to, to be in that top four. Well said. Yeah, it's been super, super competitive. Um, this week also, you announced that the F1 Academy winner Marta Garcia would be driving for ERT in the rookie test in Berlin in just a few weeks. Great news uh, and, and amazing to see. You know, once again, female talent getting a chance to drive for Formula E. What was the, the inspiration to, to reach out to Marta? Um, lots of different factors. I think ultimately we had a few um, things that aligned that, were, that gave us the option to give the, the opportunity to Martha. Uh, she's actually here, so we're already welcoming her into the team and into Formula E. And I would say within 30 seconds of meeting her, you get that impression of a person of how they achieve the success that she has. So yeah, it's, it's great, great to have her there. And like I say, we're integrating her already and looking forward to, to seeing what she can achieve in Berlin. Yeah. Nice. Um, I think we've got a chance for one final question. I just want to chat to you guys, very generic, about the sort of racing we might see here this weekend and how it might differ from what we've seen in previous generations or even in Gen 3 last season. Ian? I think you know, we, we're getting used to a different style of racing in certain circuits. Um, I think with the, uh, the energy that we've got available to us at this particular event, we are going to see uh, the well, we're starting to call the peloton style of racing. Uh, I'm not sure whether whether that's the term we're going to use going forward or not, but I'll, I'll use that for now. I think it's um, it's going to prove to be because of that very exciting race, but very different in character to that which we saw in Mizano, because we simply don't have the space to get four or five cars next to each other going into into the corners. Um, for that reason alone, I think that again qualifying is going to be very important um, at this track. We will get to a point in the race where we'll see the inflection point coming in, at which point everybody's going to uh, disappear off. Um, but again, Monaco, this track here, is so suited to Formula E. Um, I think we've seen racing here in the past, all the way through to Gen 2 and then into Gen 3, that has really set the benchmark. And I don't see any reason why tomorrow wouldn't be any different. So what about qualifying? What sort of role do you think that will play? Yeah, that will uh, play an extremely, uh, extremely important role in qualifying. I think uh, the difference with Milano is here, so a little bit more like an SL, a proper track. 
officially is a lot less wide, you know, and, and you've got all your around, so uh, the margin for us is, uh, is a lot smaller. Uh, we're going to get a product on race, but I think a lot less than what we see in, in Misano. There will be a waiting phase, an attacking phase, and obviously uh, the last set of the race normally is things are a bit more a bit more set up. So obviously it's, it's very much a track position orientated this race. Uh, for sure the energy can make a difference. Yeah, that one strategy will be, will be key. We'll have to be smart about it. Uh, but yeah, I think it will be a, pretty much a typical Formula A race with uh, three stages uh, during, uh, during the race. But like Ian say, uh, Monaco is always exciting. There's always a, <laughs> a surprise somewhere, yeah. somewhere in there. There's also uh, normally uh, statistically a very high chance of safety car distribute the card, you know, at, uh, uh, during the race. So yeah, I think the, the team will have, uh, will have to be on their toes. And like it's been said, uh, there's no running in FP1 on the Friday. Everything is over one day. One important thing is that the time between sessions is been reduced by half. Yeah. So instead of having two hours, you have one hour. So basically, all your prep work has been done at the factory. And now you come and you just execute. And uh, if you start on the back foot, uh, it's very hard to, to rectify that on the day. So through here. You hope that all the hard work you've done and simulate and back at the factory will pay off, and then uh, you just execute the, the best we can. Yeah. Um, I realize I've just overrun a little bit, so apologies for that. Thanks very much, guys, for joining us. Um, you're free. You're free. Thanks very much. <laughs>